Find the research gap in five minutes or less. This is gonna be a tremendous video. So much of your success as a researcher, grad student, professor, wherever you are in the journey, depends on your ability to consistently, repeatedly find winning research gaps. I'm gonna show you an efficient path to find these, no matter what your field is in. I can just hear my Italian colleagues, ma no, you cannot find a research gap in a five a minutes. We're gonna do it, and I'm gonna give you the techniques to show you how, and in doing that by the end of this video, you're also gonna develop a nose for research gaps. You're gonna understand three different types of gaps that you can lift, take, and apply to your research right away. So we're gonna head here to Google Scholar, which is your starting point for finding research gaps. Some of you might already know a bit about your field. Some of you may just be at the very beginning of the journey. And this is gonna be a, a critical point. Now, what you wanna do in Google Scholar is, yes, we wanna type in our topic, but we're gonna change the settings. So let me show you how. So we'll take something topical on COVID vaccine hesitancy. And what you'll see is this is going to pull up some of the most highly cited articles in the field. What you wanna do is set the range. You can see here at the top left, you want recent gaps. It's no good for you to identify a gap from the 1980s. Might be a seminal paper that's well and good, but that gap might already be filled. So we're gonna set here a parameter to put in the last two, three years. You want it to be recent and relevant. That's also the reason why when we search now, when we get papers, we don't want to just look at systematic reviews. Why? Because those papers are going to be reviewing papers that are older, that may already be out of date. Looking at these reviews can be very helpful. It can summarize gaps. But first, what I want you to do, the fast way is to go down and find articles on your topic. So what I've done here is I've scrolled down and I found one of the most highly cited ones on this page that is a research article published in a, a nature journal, a good journal. So it's probably going to have some pretty good content for us to tap into. So let's open that up and take a look. Some of you, especially if you're new to the field, you get a paper like this and are thinking, man, I don't understand anything. It's complex. Uh, what do I do here? You start reading the introduction and you start getting lost. So I want you to scrap all that. I want you to hone in like a laser beam and go straight to the gap. Go kind of straight to the meat of the paper for what you're looking for. By the way, we have great training on reading that's gonna save you so much time. Um, so check that out, we put a link below. But you're gonna forensically go through here and look for gaps. Now where are you gonna find these gaps? There are three main places in the paper where you'll find them. We're trying to do this fast. So we're gonna go straight to the end of the paper, which is in the discussion where we talk about study limitations. And that's right about, there's often even gonna be a subheading here. Here we go, study limitations. Oh, well, what are those study limitations gonna do? The paper is gonna acknowledge its weaknesses and they're gonna start pointing to, either in this section or the one that just follows it, future research. So it's gonna say, we stopped short of doing this, or this was a flaw in our paper, and this is a remaining gap. So uh, let's take a look here. And we can see, if you look at this close, I'll try to zoom in here so it's a little bit bigger. We can see what were the weaknesses of this paper and they give us clues as to what could be some great gaps that we could tap. So one here is, is this. This strikes me immediately as a really key gap. Questions, they did a survey with regard to, they answered questions with regard to a hypothetical vaccine. Well, that could be very different than if we're talking about people's experience with a real vaccine being available to them. So this is an immediate gap that you can harvest and pluck, take over to an Excel document or a Word document, somewhere where you can keep track of these gaps because you may want to go do a quick harvesting and get tens, twenties, even hundreds of gaps that you can then prioritize on criteria of what's the fastest you can do, what's feasible, what's low-hanging fruit. I love low-hanging fruit. I, I think as a professor, the reason I've published 400 articles, I got tenure very quickly at Cambridge in my career is because I was able to identify low-hanging fruit through this process that I'm sharing with you. Now, so that, that would be one gap here. And uh, let, let's look at others. Hey, here's another one. The current study uh, is it really, there's no secret sauce. There's no magic here. Uh, they tell you what the gap is. The current study was limited to two Western European countries. Okay, well, that's obviously a problem. If we're interested in this topic, then uh, maybe those Western European countries really don't reflect the experience of Eastern European countries, countries in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, elsewhere in the world. And they say, already clear, it's essential that we get this information from other countries. That's a second gap. And this leads right into my point about different types of gaps. This is an example of a population gap. Hey, we've studied in this population, 
but not this other population that might be quite important. For example, in psychology, many studies are done on a limited set of college students, which may not reflect the real world. So this is one type of gap called a population gap. Other type of gap that we saw up here, you could think of um, as a bit, here we go, a um, hypothetical uh, vaccine. You could uh, think of this as a, a type of empirical gap that we looked at a hypothetical vaccine, not a real vaccine. So you could think of that as a methodological gap that in their methods, they just had to look at hypothetical ones and uh, not actual ones. And that led to an empirical gap or evidence gap. So we've got two broad kinds here, a, a population gap and a uh, methodological gap. The other type is a conceptual gap. And I don't see that reflected in this paper for simplicity, but it might be that they tested one theory uh, and not another theory. And this new theory that maybe has a lot of light, uh, could could really get bring new insights that wouldn't be found otherwise. Okay, and let's look at another uh, gap here, and we've got another population gap here that comes out. Finally, they use uh, nationally representative samples, but that might not have reached difficult to reach populations, homeless people in prisons, or others who might be very important to vaccinate. So uh, this is a strategy you can use right away. So repeat that process, harvest lots of gaps. Now, you can identify this very quickly. There's a next step on these gaps because sometimes it can be hard for you to understand which of these gaps are the most important, which is the most feasible. That's where step number two, strategy number two comes into place. I want you to tap the value of your mentors. I want you to have a mentor in the first place. If you don't, your supervisors, colleagues, peers, just bat these ideas by them. Hey, I found this gap in the literature. And what do you think? Is this an important gap? Can I do this in a short amount of time? Could, could I develop this and publish this in a high impact journal? Uh, take advantage of those resources available to you. I think sometimes students are a little bit scared about bothering their professors or their peers to ask questions. No, this is a critical time where you're investing in yourself. So you need to make the most of this right away. So don't be scared to ask. Come with that running short list and you will set yourself up for a very productive, healthy, and positive conversation with your colleagues. Then I wanna to come to a third approach that, that you can use, which we've had some great success with, uh, and that is to take a more systematic approach yourself. So if we come back here, what you'll see is that the very first paper was a systematic review. I recommend for almost, uh, many of you will know, I'm, I'm pretty much a systematic review evangelist. I recommend these for almost anybody who's struggling to find a research gap, because you're going to do a literature review, but you're gonna do that review on steroids in a publishable step-by-step -step way. And an output of almost every systematic review is to set an agenda for future research. If you'd like to learn more about systematic reviews, we've got a 100% free step-by-step -step playlist that takes you from the very beginning to identifying your topic, using some of the methods we're sharing here, through to publishing and submitting to a peer-reviewed journal. You're going to learn a ton that's gonna strengthen your skills as a researcher. I wish I would have had this at when I was sitting where you are embarking on this journey. And I wanna to come to our last secret tip. This has just emerged only recently and use it kind of knowing the risks, kind of disclaimers and caveats about it. But we now have new emerging possibilities with artificial intelligence to find gaps. I tested this with a student whom we had worked together to find a, a gap, and we just used artificial intelligence to see what it came up with. And to our surprise, in a very short period of time, it identified the gap that we eventually went on to focus on in our research together. So let me just show you quickly how you can apply this in your own work. It's important here that you give a good prompt. So say, so I'm a uh, early career researcher looking for research gaps that are feasible to address in a short period of time and uh, publish in high impact journals. Can you identify a series of gaps in research on COVID vaccine hesitancy? Let's see what it comes up with. Um, so indeed, it's going to come up with a series of types of gaps. Uh, misinformation, this is a very nice gap, it's something we've worked on ourselves. Comparative studies across countries. And you see, this will give you ideas. Not all of them will be useful, uh, but some of them can be quite helpful. And you'll see this came up with different gaps than what we found on our own. So I would use this as a complement to the gaps that you found. The other thing you can do is pop your gap into ChatGPT to get feedback on if this is a good gap for you to address. So 
combine these two approaches very powerfully and when you can get feedback from trusted mentors and colleagues. If you can identify gaps routinely and regularly, it's going to set you apart from your peers and your students and help you get on that proverbial fast track in your own academic and research career. Definitely like this video, subscribe for more tips like these. And don't forget to join my exclusive Facebook group where we can chat directly and we have a lot of masterclasses, weekly live workshops and more that's going to help you along the way.